we came in. Welcome to Caleb Can't Read. I'm Jordan Rabel. I'm Caleb Terrence. Well, that's everything I had planned. That's have, all I wrote out. You have a stack of fucking papers <laughs> right there. I, I really hope you don't have any more written jokes. Just in there for me, because what you showed me before we did this, that was fucking bad. <laughs> you don't know what's in here. We don't. You don't even know the subject of who we're talking about today. I can't today. fucking read, Jordan. No, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Like, you can't you can't wait. Boy, this is really gonna help with your GED. Thank you. <laughs> Alright. You done with the first already? Of course I am. God damn. Alright. <clears throat> well, let's begin, shall we? Go ahead and crack it. You might as well. Yeah, gotta make sure it's all wet for you first before you put the plunger in. There we go. Please don't fucking lick your goddamn finger. I don't want to waste any. <laughs> Alright, here we go. <laughs> Gaetano Giuseppe Giacomo Casanova was born April 2nd, 1697 in Parma, Italy. I did look it up. Yes, this is where Parmesan cheese was invented. His parents, Giacomo and Anna, immigrated from the Aragon region in Spain. His older brother, Gian Battista, left home in 1712 when Gaetano was only 15 years old and was never heard from again. Gaetano left home the following year to join an acting troupe after falling in love with a comedy stage actress that the people called La Fragoletta, meaning Little Strawberry. Oh. She was 50 at the time. Oh. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> The relationship didn't last, probably because of the age difference, and she soon married elsewhere. It's hard to say at what point after the breakup Gaetano decided to leave the troupe, because we don't really know how long he was with Little Strawberry, but we do know he left in 1723 and pretty quickly found a working position. Wait, how old is this dude at this point? He's, um, I mean... I just want to know the age gap here. He's, I'm going to say early 20s. Nice. Oh, you know what? Yeah, he's he's like about twenty right now. That's pretty good. I mean, like you gotta you gotta do that before you hit thirty because it doesn't count as like the cougar dynamic if you do it after you hit thirty. It's not the same <laughs> to marry a fifty year old. No, no, no. To just bang a cougar. Yeah, no, you, you gotta lady. be you, a, to you be gotta be a 20s. young man. Otherwise, it's not worth mentionable. It's just it's, like yeah, I had not... sex. It's not I had sex with an older lady. It's like just you know. Oh whoa, she was fifty. Fuck, how old are you? I'm forty one. Well, yeah. that's. Uh, that's that's that. normal. <laughs> even, even, even like, oh, I'm 30 when he'd be like, yeah. Yeah, I, look, man, we are we all... It, it was closing time. What are you, you going to do? I'm, I don't, I'm not like... I don't know, I'm just generally vibing from this that this is not like a well-taken-care-of 50-year-old woman either. I mean, <laughs> well, like, she's, she's an actress in a traveling acting troupe, which... To, by today's standards, I mean, it sounds like, like well, it sounds like she would probably be like traveling with the the guy who also like drums on fucking buckets. But you know, back <laughs> then, <laughs> back then, I think it was probably a, a a actual career to have. I mean, I mean, I don't know, I don't know the history of cocaine, but if it was around, <laughs> then they absolutely had it, and it is not kind to you. They were taking so, it in eye drops. She's probably sure. looking pretty fucking gnar. <laughs> Why do you call her a little strawberry? Well, <laughs> you ever left one for a while and just seen it get real fucked up? <laughs> yeah, it's that vibe. Oh, fuck, that's like right. One time I dropped one under my couch and just left it there for like two months, and then finally when I was cleaning. You ever see the lint that... Never mind. All right, so... <laughs> All right, so um, when he does leave Little Strawberry in 1723... He quickly found a working position at the Teatro, Teatro I'm sorry, I, I don't know Italian, as it turns out. Um, I have to go off of, like, Coppola movies. Just act like you're <laughs> making fun of their, their entire language, and I think it'll come out. Okay. So when he found a working position at the Teatro San Samuel in Venice. That's probably close. That's, that's shit. That was pretty good. See? I sound, I sound like I was really yelling about that salami. Yeah, dude, I was you, really you fucking mad. Thing and <laughs> you can't talk without your hands if you're but doing But please don't do that every fucking time. <laughs> I won't. Okay. <laughs> so he goes to work in Venice, pleasure capital of the world at the time. The theater itself has a rich history of fires, frequent closures and reopenings, and altercations with the government due to Napoleonic law before its eventual demol uh, demolition in 1894, but we won't get into that here. 
I just had to add that because I read the full page on it. I found it astounding, but that's it has no presence here. Nice flex, bud. Continue. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> I wasted half a day of work doing that. Hmm. Now, Zanetta Ferrusi was born August 27th, 1707, to Girolamo and Marzia Ferrusi. Girolamo was a shoemaker working nearby the Teatro San Samuel when at age 16, Zanetta met Gaetano, who was 26 at the time. They married a year later. It is said that Girolamo died from grief at his daughter having married an actor. Her mother, Marzia, was also not thrilled, but was only reconciled when Gaetano made a promise that he would not allow Zanetta to be an actress. It wasn't soon long after this, however, that the promise was broken and Zanetta took up an apprenticeship alongside her husband at the Teatro San Samuel. From here, she was quickly pregnant with her first child and the subject of today's episode, Giacomo Gerlamo Casanova. And he was born April 2nd, 1725 in the Republic of Venice. Wait, why? Okay, I'm not... What? Why would they not want... Why would you not want your kid to be... An actor? In theater. At any point... I don't understand. I I mean, honestly... The context of this, like, what is it? You ask any fucking waiter in L.A. what his relationship is with his parents right now. Yeah, but that's because You go do that. That's because it's, like, how it is now. <laughs> like, back then, you could, like, literally, like, I don't know. I, I would imagine it would be a little fucking easier to get paid doing that shit. I, I don't know. I, I mean... mean... I, I don't think, think it was, like, saturated as a fucking market. Like, I don't think it's... The career choices back then, I have to imagine, was either, like, actor or grave maker. Like, <laughs> I don't know. What else did you do? Like, uh, your day-to-day business is just trying not to get shit in your mouth. Like, anywhere you go. Nobody's washing hands. Nobody knows what toilet paper is yet. I, I don't even think they were using bay leaves. You know? It's like, they, you just... You're trying not to ingest shit. That's your number one concern every day. I guess. <laughs> Fucking shit in the spaghetti. <laughs> well, spaghetti, I got this a corn. It's hardly food in my fucking spaghetti. <laughs> so, according to his later memoirs, Giacomo's father, Gaetano, suspected the proprietor of the uh, Teatro San Samuel of being his real father, a man named Michel Grimani. Michel, Michael... They call him Michelle over there. What are you going to do? It's a thing. Jordan. Yeah, I know. Go on. Okay, I just... I don't know. Like... (laughs) The year following Giacomo's birth, the family agreed to theater work in London, where they had their second son, Francesco Giuseppe Casanova, on June 1st, 1727. This time, Giattano suspected the real father to be George Augustus, Prince of Wales, who would later become King George II. His son, George III, also known as Mad King George, was the leader of Great Britain during the Revolutionary War. So the guy that we fought against, it's very possible that his dad was actually Casanova's brother's dad as well. The Casanovas returned to Venice in 1728, where Giacomo's parents had four more children, Giovanni in 1730, Faustina in 1731, Maria in 1732, and finally Giattano Jr. in 1734, two months after Gaetano Sr.'s death in December of 1733. He died as a result of an infected abscess. From poop. (laughs) It's an infected abscess on his ear. His ear? It... Maybe he got shit in his ear. You get all kinds of infections from just, like, getting shit, like, on your skin. I mean, he could have been taking a swim in one of the Venice canals. I... Fuck. Like, all kinds of weird (laughs) nastiness. (laughs) I mean, I could go off on a tangent on this if you want to. Like, you know how we wipe our asses in the back of the chips trucks when we're working? I don't. So it's a yes. like dirty asshole, right? Turns out, uh, if you do that, and then you work an entire day while you're sweaty after wiping your ass with a dirty glove, your hair follicles on your ass will get infected. You know, I hear washing your downstairs with Nair is actually probably the the best case scenario for that. I mean, yeah, but then the hair comes back. And then you got like this not if you continue like, to wash you got, like, your nair. What am I supposed to nair my asshole every single fucking day? Yes, that's absurd. Do you remember when our work policy at Old Can Henry's was you better be shaving every day? And it's like that's that's ridiculous. No, I don't no. need to shave every yeah, day. Yeah, do you remember you why me? I just told them to suck my ass and I never did that? I don't remember the exact reason, but there were plenty. It's stupid. 
<laughs> oh, okay. You know, I see your point. <laughs> I understand that this is company policy, sir, but it is really fucking stupid. So, it is pretty fucking stupid. Yeah. I, I, I can't argue with you. Yeah, yeah so I just stupid. didn't do it. What are they going to fucking do? No, fire me? Okay, I'll go get another shitty minimum wage job. I don't give a damn. Didn't they fire you? Yeah. You know what I, <laughs> I guess what I did, Jordan, I went and got another shitty minimum wage job. Go fucking figure, man. <laughs> it wasn't from the saving. You really shouldn't have shit in his coffee, man. That was just, just, that was uncalled for. I mean, didn't you make a cake that says two week notice? And we're gonna have to edit all this out because since nobody understands like, the context <laughs> of the history, that like this is just a fat five minute chunk okay, here. Okay, okay. It's just gonna have to get taken. So go continue. <laughs> Sorry. Like, like, so he did die uh, from an infected abscess on his ear. It killed him just eight days after the infection started. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty quick turnaround. It doesn't. <laughs> Two days before his death, Gaetano Sr. called upon the Grimani family, proprietors of his former workplace at the Teatro San Samuel, including the supposed real father of Giacomo, and made the Grimanis pledge to watch over the rest of the Casanovas and promise that they would never become actors. Giacomo was just eight years old at I the time of his this. father's passing. I don't fucking get this. <laughs> Go, go on. Sorry. Just everyone hates an actor. What the fuck? It's just carried on forever. <laughs> now, I fucking hate theater kids. <laughs> <laughs> As a child, Giacomo suffered frequent nosebleeds. The doctor blamed the density of Venice's air, but his grandmother, Marcia, believed it to be something closer to a curse. Without his mother's That's knowledge... Reasonable. Yeah. Marcia took Giacomo to the outskirts of town to a local witch. <laughs> this is getting really nice. I like this. Go. Quote, My grandmother gave her a silver ducat, whereupon the witch took me up and carried me across the room, depositing me in a huge chest, which stood in a corner. What yeah? the fuck is a ducat? Uh, it's a... Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It says dookie. Yeah, they just traded straight silver shits. These people had a real problem, man. <laughs> ducat is... It's a form of currency. It's a silver coin. Oh, okay. I... T- my guess. I, I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, I don't know. Fuck. Witches take Ducat, apparently. Move on. Let's go. Like... Ooh, nutmeg and cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> she closed the lid and told me not to be frightened. I lay still, holding my handkerchief to my nose, which had not ceased bleeding. As is tradition. <laughs> I could hear laughter, weeping, singing, screams and cries going on outside, but loss of blood and stupidity made me indifferent to the uproar. By and by, the old woman lifted me out of the box, undressed me, and put me into her bed. She burnt drugs and muttered spells over me, rubbed my temples and the back of my neck with a sweet-smelling ointment, and gave me five sugar plums to eat. She told me I should get well, but only if I was careful not to tell anyone what she had done to cure me. If I spoke of what had taken place, she said, I should most surely bleed to death. End quote. As far as his relationship with his siblings went, Giacomo had probably the most interaction with his next eldest sibling, Francesco. Quote, I remember being in my father's room. A large crystal lying on the table attracted my fancy, and I put it in my pocket. (laughs) By and by, my father got up to look for the crystal, and not finding it, he naturally accused us of taking it. My brother denied this, and so did I, whereupon my father said, We should be searched, and the one in whose possession it was found should have a good beating. While pretending to hunt for the crystal in the corners of the room, I slipped it into my brother's pocket. I regretted having done so, for I might have pretended to find it on uh, on the floor, but it was too late. The fatal ball was found on the innocent boy, and he got the punishment. Three or four years later, I was fool enough to boast to Francesco of the trick I had played on him. He never forgave me, and never missed an opportunity of revenging himself. In contrast... All that I could find about what Giacomo had to say about his youngest sibling, Gaetano Jr., was, My youngest brother was a posthumous child. He took holy orders and died in Rome about 15 years ago. That's all he had to say about one of his siblings. So he just, he just yeah, one time I planted something on him and then my dad beat him the fuck down. <laughs> and, I mean, that's... Uh, that's and, his... yeah, and yeah, I didn't deserve it. He was a good kid. <laughs> like, that's... His... Yeah, he's a good guy. Like, it's, it's really fucking weird that, like, I mean, clearly, like, we're reading about the witch thing, so clearly he did fucking tell somebody about the witch thing. It's weird that he would well, say... Well, true, that is true, yeah. It's like, that's kind of... I, I would just... Just like, leave that out of your I memoirs? Would, maybe fucking... <laughs> maybe leave that shit out, and also leave out the random bit about just being terrible to, like... It's pretty interesting. <laughs> it's like... 
I'm not going to go into any uh, details, at least recorded, about the uh, satanic ritual that I witnessed. I'm not going to talk about who was involved and what took place. But you know what? It was interesting, I mean, and I love just, to tell people. <laughs> I mean, it's just some, like, hillbilly, like, horse shit. It's not like... Oh, for sure, for sure. But uh, those people surely believed it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's troubling. It was troubling. Very interesting, but it was very troubling. <clears throat> so. <laughs> yeah, editing that out. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. For his ninth birthday, Giacomo was sent to a boarding house 25 miles away from his home in Venice to Padua, Italy. As he simply put how he thought about his relationship with his mother because of this... I was kissed and told to be a good boy, and that was how they got rid of me. It's a bit dramatic. Yeah, right. Meanwhile, Zanetta carried on after Gaetano Sr.'s death. A famous playwright by the name of Carlo Goldoni wrote a play about her, a comedy based on the real-life story of a very famous actor at the time coming on to her, and she declined his advance. She had an engagement for a time with a Russian gentleman the year after Gaetano's passing, but it didn't work out. Because she didn't speak Russian, and practically no one in Russia spoke Italian. But in 1737, she ended up signing a long-term contract with an acting troupe and left her family in the care of her mother, Marzia, when Giacomo was about 12 years old and away at boarding school. I like that the guy just kind of wrote an entire play just about a famous actor like trying to hit on her, and she just denied his advances. I can't imagine that being like an hour-long play. He but wrote a full play about it. I mean, he wrote a, a full of, play about that's it. That's a lot of butthurt. I mean, you see, like, <laughs> I mean, you, you've been around people that don't handle rejection well in your life, right? Like, I can totally see that. Like, I can imagine her... only an hour. Like, like no, dude. Like, I can totally imagine her being like bitch. her character being played on on stage by just a burly man. Just like he's drunk and just like, oh, uh, Zanetta, how are you? Oh, I might. I'm doing real fucking fine, hell bitchy! You know, like, like no, 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 dude, no. The character, this, the, no, the male lead in this is totally not me. Let's get that out of the way right now. And yes, you do have to wear this huge prosthetic cock under those pants. Like, <laughs> she's just walking and it's just tapping the ground. swinging around, like, <laughs> keeps tripping on her balls. <laughs> no, dude, this has nothing to do with that at all. <laughs> like, like. <coughs> His time at the boarding house was anything but great for Giacomo. As he described it, Night was made hideous by quantities of huge rats which ran about the floor and turned my blood cold with terror. So he applied to live and work directly under the tutelage of his head instructor, Abbe Gozi. It was at his residence that he came unto his first sexual experience when he was just 11. Not by the abbot. You see, at first... Thank you. At first... <laughs> so he's he's got this this maid servant there. And you see, at first she was just helping him undress and get into his evening clothes, but soon she was grabbing around and uh, he was fucking molested. Fuck, all I right? hated how he, you said that. Uh, it's how he describes it. He tries to pass it off. He like with he, that inflection? It, uh, dude, that was it, rough. It's way worse it, when it, I have to look I swear at you to God. do it, by the way. Like, people aren't going to fucking understand <laughs> that. That fucking hurt. You fucking, like, you, you read it and he tries to pass it off like he was such a pimp from a young age, but motherfucker, you were 11. You got molested. That's not your first raw sexual experience. You were a victim. I mean, like... <laughs> like yeah. I fucking... And, and it's terrible. Like, he's he really passes it off like, oh, I've always had a... I've always had a, th a thing with the ladies. And it's like, no, no. No, you were a child. You were wearing one of those weird fucking Italian gowns, weren't you? That you all wore up until you were, like, a teenager and then you wore more frocks or whatever. But, like, you were... You were a child. You're like, look... <laughs> you're like, look, man, I get it, like... <laughs> the kid's not supposed to be, like, a man yet, but the dress thing is a bit weird. Like, I feel like we're going a bit hard in the other direction here, and we don't need to be. He didn't need like, to wear the lipstick and blush, but, you know, yeah, it's... Such was the times, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why did you go there? <laughs> <laughs> he entered into the University of Padua at age 12 and studied law at the insistence of Abbe Gozi who wanted him to be a lawyer, even though Giacomo wanted to practice medicine. However, he didn't have the opportunity to become a lawyer because while he was in school, he racked up considerable gambling debts with other students and had to eventually run away from Padua and back to Venice to avoid his debtors. He was 15 when he decided he'd become a clergyman while finishing his last few years of university, jumping back and forth between Venice and Padua. Can you imagine that? Having a gambling debt at 15? No, no, motherfucker. What? Can you imagine literally being able to just run away from debt? 
Oh yeah, you I changed would be your name such a piece done. of shit. <laughs> like, oh my god, the shit you could get away with, dude. Like, well, I, I'm pretty sure. Like, I I don't know how they did it back in the day. I know that people just like fucked off fifty miles east. And then just, like, well, I guess I'm Jonathan now. I could but, just you go know, a little bit further than anybody else wants to walk and be fine. But I know some like, of these people got, they got, they did get caught sometimes. I mean, yeah, they but did how? Just fuck you up. Well, like, how, yeah, but how? I mean, these people are saying, we're going to find you. But what do they do? There's so many towns in, like, a 50-mile radius. How do they find these people? Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. I, it's a little crazy. If, if you're, like, a fucking traveling actor, I can see it being a problem. Like this dude is. Oh, Sure. Well, like, no, that, no, 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 he's, he's like, not a traveling actor. That was oh, his dad, but fuck, he's, right. he's, he himself is just a student. He's just, I, I mean, he's a student. He's oh, even he's, more untraceable. He's fucking fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Is, yeah. I mean, the problem is, is that, yeah, if, if he owed money to adults, that's one thing. You owe money to other 15 and 16 year olds. They see themselves as equals. Like, They're going to cut your toes off. Like, dude, if, <laughs> I, if, if I can manage fucking running from collections now, can you imagine the shit that I could accomplish <laughs> back in the day when, like, nobody could call me? Man. Like, call me from a fucking phone that is not your phone, and they'd be like, hey, how's it going? I'd be like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> like, who the fuck are you? What do you want? Oh, uh, oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> I mean, I would love to be able to sit where I am now, rack up debt, and then when the IRS like comes knocking on my door, I just open the the door with a gun, just like, "Hey, are you uh, are you Jordan? Do I look like Jordan? No, I guess not. No. Well, see you later. Guess we'll just scratch this debt off. Like that. Just fucking just rack like... one real quick and be like, "Do I look like Jordan to you? <laughs> are you sure about that? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, what's your name again? Carl. Oh, okay. Well, see you later, Carl. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just it sounds, I mean, I know every, there's poop everywhere, and you die in eight days from ear infections from shit in your spaghetti, but this does sound pretty magical to me. So, he's, he's jumping back and forth between Venice and Padua. He befriended a local senator in Venice who, for whatever reason, thought Giacomo was very affluent or well-to-do. I mean, he, he was a very good bullshitter, I'll say that much. The senator kind of took Giacomo under his wing and expanded his knowledge of fine food and wine, giving him the opportunity to refine himself and sound like he knows what the hell he's talking about in casual conversation. It was at the senator's palace that Giacomo first met Teresa Eimer, who was a famous 17-year-old opera singer at the time. She was essentially living at the senator's palace as kind of like a favor to him as a social thing, but she did eventually turn down the 76-year-old senator's proposal for marriage. Of course, the senator blamed Giacomo for this indifference. <laughs> he's <laughs> 76. It's back in whenever the fuck. Yeah, he's not going to live much rich. longer. he's rich. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I see. That's You're what going... I'm getting at. I, yeah, yeah. Why yeah. the fuck would you turn that down? I'd do it. Like, <laughs> he's not, he's got like what, like fucking dude, four, even made it to 80, that'd be amazing. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Did you just get all that shit? <laughs> well, one night, one night Casanova gets up to go to the restroom or something, and when he gets back in bed, he feels Teresa in bed behind him. Like, they, they'd often, you know, like, it, it, it wasn't too uncommon, really. Like, they were for sure fucking around. Uh, you know, she snuck in while he was up. Uh, and she and Giacomo had been doing this shit for a while, night after night, so it wasn't, it wasn't too weird, you know? So Casanova turns over, re ready to do the deed, and it's the senator <laughs> in his bed. <laughs> and he's like, hello, Giacomo. So you've been doing it with Teresa, have you? And Giacomo's like, what gave you that idea? Like, no, I'm just, I like to picture him just like, just like, no, I'm playing this up. No, I'm actually sexually excited to see it. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> well, I thought it was you. I like, always no, thought I, it was I you. knew it was you, and I'm ready for this. Let's do this. <laughs> the senator's like, well, you didn't, you didn't yell or seem alarmed when there was someone in your bed. And Giacomo tries his best to bullshit himself out of this situation, but it just doesn't work. I mean, he was very clearly caught. <laughs> It was shortly after he was kicked out from the Sanders Palace that he sought help from his seven uh, from his old guardians, the Grimanis. They roomed with him, uh, or sorry, they roomed him with some distant relatives while he was uh, while he was finishing school. And it was here he lost his virginity to sisters Nanette and Marmo. Uh, Martin, her name is Martin. Wait, this is the Nanette. same dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, the same the same guy is just. Okay, well, been... that's that's <laughs> fucking horseshit right there. Dude. Like there, it was there he lost his virginity. Get the fuck out. To sisters Nanette like... and Martin uh, Savornian, 
who were 14 and 16, respectively. Giacomo found his reason for living, and it's here his legend begins as Casanova. I mean, so he lost... <laughs> So he, quote-unquote, lost his... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> lost his virginity. Then there was two chicks at the same time? Mm-hmm. And now Sisters, he's, yeah. he's found his, like, reason to... What, what was that again? It, his said? reason for living. Is the double blowjob, apparently. Is is just the dirty deed. It is any deed. I mean, the double blowjob, it's... No more of sitting on his hand lonely nights. Truly, he has found... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, Paradise. <laughs> So he graduated from the University of Padua in 1742 at age 17. It's hard to say how much longer it was after his graduation that this happened, but sometime in his late teens or early 20s, his grandmother, uh, Marcia Ferrusi, died. Casanova, thinking he would inherit his family home, was surprised when he found out his home was being repossessed by none other by the Grimanis, the old family friends. And so Casanova tries to sell the furniture to make ends meet, but Gramani says, no, 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 that's ours too. Stop trying to sell shit, or I'll have you arrested. But Ca- Casanova kept going, and true to his word, Gramani had Casanova arrested. Well, during his arrest, Casanova feigns an illness, and who knows why, but the cops buy it. So they have him in this docked ship uh, with a single jailer in his room as a kind of makeshift jail cell for nobles, I guess. They just they just want him looked at by a doctor in the morning before they do take him to jail. So Casanova is alone with this one jailer, right? And Casanova is not going anywhere. He's sick. So he's chatting up the jailer, and he convinces the guy that since we're going to be bored all night, might as well fucking raid the pantry, uh, pantry and get sloshed, you know? And the whole time it's just the jailer doing the drinking. Casanova is faking it. And when the jailer knocks out, Casanova quickly grabs a cloak. How the fuck did he not notice that? Like, <laughs> Honestly, how the fuck, he probably like, is getting paid in Parmesan cheese. He really doesn't give a fuck. Like, you know? are we like, doing, like, yeah, no, no, I don't believe this shit. Like, no way. You don't not notice someone not drinking. Like, what is he doing? Like, cartoonishly throwing it at this fucking head? Like, whoa! Ooh. The, the plant behind him is wilting. Just, ooh! Like, you just don't notice him not swallowing when he's sipping. Like, like, okay, like... Well, supposedly, Casanova quickly grabs a cloak, gets off the boat, <clears throat> and waits down the street from where Grimani lives. He sees Grimani coming home, so he jumps out of the shadows and beats the shit out of the guy with a cane and throws him into the canal. <laughs> then he runs back onto the boat and locks himself in his cell. Grimani shows up the next morning like, Casanova kicked the shit out of me! I know it was him! And Casanova is just like, I was here all night. I was being watched the whole time, Fucking right? Gaslight and he's like, he's like, <laughs> he's like nudging the jailer who passed out the night before. And he's just like, right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's an asshole. He is an asshole. Fucking, that's that is advanced, <laughs> advanced asshole. Shit. Well, after he got out of jail, Casanova jumped between different clerical jobs and different abbeys. He still had that training of, like, godship and stuff, but he was very clearly not living the life. Uh, he, he was leaving each abbey for just a multitude of petty reasons. His mom got him a job at one abbey, but he turned it down after basically his orientation because he didn't like their rules. He somehow landed a job with the Spanish ambassador of Pope Benedict the Fourteenth due to connections he had through some duke. Uh, this guy... Um, this uh, this guy had connections to the Spanish crown. He almost immediately fucked this up by meeting the Pope. Casanova meets the Pope, and he's asking him if he could be given special allowance to read the forbidden books. Also, could he just skip having fish on Fridays? Like, he just doesn't want to do that whole thing. Like, no meat on Fridays. I gotta eat fish. I'm not really in particular to it. Like, he's asking the Pope, like, could I just be a little less Catholic than that? I mean, just don't, <laughs> just don't, just do it. Just don't, don't, yeah, I know. don't just, ask anything You don't have to it. ask the Pope. And if you get caught, just kind of give him that, like, oh, fuck, sorry, look, we'll you know, you know. I do also like, though, that he's just, like, pretty much shaking the guy's hand. Pope had already met, like, 15 new guys that day from, like, acquaintances that are just like, hey, Pope! You gotta meet this guy, Charles. Chuck is my buddy, man. He's crazy. You know, and they're always just, you know, shaking hands, not remembering these fucking guys. And he just straight up asks him for a big favor. Not even the fish thing, but he's just like, hey, you know those forbidden books that you keep locked away? Can I see those? Like... (laughs) That's like when fucking Will Smith. I didn't think anyone would ask. That's like yeah, when. Like... It's like when Will Smith brought Jaden Smith to meet Barack Obama, and Jaden was just like, "Tell me about the aliens, Mr. President." Like, like in the dungeon, two doors past the boy harem. Like... <laughs> 
Well, he wanted to skip the fish because it makes his eyes all puffy. <laughs> he was he was also caught sending love letters to people within his own church, supposedly writing them for another cardinal, but not him. Uh, eventually, he was framed, so he says, uh, for some minor scandal, thanked for his service, and fired from the church. After, uh, whoa, 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 what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? Framed for some minor scandal. That he won't say. He doesn't say what the fuck it is. So out of all the shit that he's really proud of, it's just, yeah, they framed me for some bullshit. And I, I, honestly, he probably, he probably knocked up a nun. I mean, <sighs> I mean, I don't, why do you jump to that? Oh, it's, it, it's actually, it was fairly common back then. Uh, nun fucking? Yeah. Fra Angelico was actually a monk. Uh, he was a Renaissance artist. Oh, yeah, artist. Fra Angelico. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. No, no, I'm telling you about him now, motherfucker. All right, all right, all right, go on. Like... <laughs> he was a Renaissance artist who uh, who lived in a monastery, and across the cliff was uh, was a habit, and he went and he knocked up a nun there, and they had a runaway. His stuff is really good, though. He's got really good art. <laughs> but anyways, uh, right. so, I, look, you, you don't have condoms. No, this, what are you going to do? No, 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 there's, no, there's no way he fucked a nun. I mean, he's not going to be like, I got framed for fucking... Like, really, you think this dude that is so proudly proclaiming that he got diddled when he was 11, Mm. and then he got... A fair point. And then he lost his virginity to, like, two chicks at the same time, man. Like, you you (laughs) fucking tell me if he knocked up a nun, he wouldn't just be like, yeah, I fucking knocked up a nun. (laughs) I made her call for Satan. (laughs) But, no, I... You're... That's a fair point. I I don't know. So it couldn't have been something sexual, then. I don't think it was anything sexual. It was probably something like... Probably stole a bunch of shit. Yeah, he like... probably did something like real embarrassing, like you know, like uh, he probably just got like real wasted and got found just like hugging a toilet with his fucking pants down. <laughs> it was on Friday. He's got like a plate of fish next to him, and they were just like, "That's enough. Get the fuck out of here." Like he keeps taking the uh, keeps taking that uh, that wine that you're supposed to sup from his blood or whatever. Yeah. Probably taking that and, like, fucking, like, putting Welch's and watering it down and shit. Like, <laughs> the Pope's in there marking the fucking wine bottle. I bet, whatever it was, like, <laughs> I bet, because he glanced over it, I bet it was fucking, like, so horrendously stupid and shameful. It probably was, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing proud there. Guys, I'm gonna tie the Pope's shoes, shoelaces together. It's gonna be really fucking funny. Yeah, but no, <laughs> even that, he would have wrote about it. No, it, yeah, right. it, be, it, it really does I, have to be I, something fucking, really like, fucking if, bad. If we had to bet on this shit right now, I would say that, like, dude definitely just, like, got wasted and then acted a fool. I'd say theft and got caught wise, really, like, really stupidly. Yeah, I mean, a fair point. Like, <laughs> I mean, nobody likes to go back to that or glaze over those points in their life where you fucking, you know... You're at a party, you go throw up in the toilet, you raise your head out from the fucking toilet. Oh, I'm in my home toilet, how'd that happen? Let's never find out. Like, I mean... Or is that just a, a me thing? Cause I, no, I mean, hey, Caitlin Bennett got famous for something, you know? She's that uh, AR-15, look at all this uh, Oh, the one who shit warming. her pants! Exactly! Yeah, yeah the yeah. pants shit lady! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> She, th- she thinks she's famous for all these conservative talking points, but in reality... You know what? I better just... shit his fucking pants. <laughs> like... People throw toilet paper and diapers at her at every college she goes God, to. That's so good. You know what, though? She she holds her head really high with that, and it's... I, it I is, mean, it is some, it, it's something to, to admire. I mean, she really like, does not I, care. I, I've heard from multiple... This is fucking horseshit. I've heard from people that, like, that didn't actually happen. Like, she did not indeed shit her pants, but I'm so on board with this. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, yeah. I, it, uh, I, it probably is. That's That photo probably isn't her, but um, I'm all like, for just... Yeah. I mean, your career is literally just, like, taking advantage of making a spectacle for dumb fucking people and taking advantage of them and getting paid while doing nothing for society. Yeah, her fuck fan, you, you shit your pants. Her, her <laughs> fan base doesn't give a fuck, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. She knows that. <laughs> Deny global warming again! Do it! Do it! <laughs> like, he got diapers and a t-shirt cannon and just fucking do 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 <laughs> fucking idiot. Like, oh god damn it man she's gonna get voted to something official one of these days that oh fuck man that really fucks me up <laughs> yeah <laughs> anyway <Yeah. laughs> and we're gonna be yelling about her shit in her pants it's gonna be fucking magical <laughs> by the way listeners i don't have covid or any other kind of lung disease this is just how i uh laugh is uh i get into coughing fits it's happened my whole life. There's nothing to, there's nothing to say about it. Yeah. 
Yeah. It just sounds terrible. It sounds like it. Sketches like me out. <clears throat> mm, God. I love it when it's good and uh, raspy. Do you? Oh, it's like it's like I'm getting an itch scratched from way down low. It's Fuck. great. Fuck, that sucks. Please don't say that <sighs> love to me it. again. <laughs> so, all right. So Casanova, right. he's he gets ejected from the church. <clears throat> After this, he lost the rest of the pay he made from his clerical job <clears throat> gambling. And uh, with nowhere to go, he decided to join the Venetian army. He was soon stationed in Constantinople, where he lost all of his military pay gambling. Um, broke, he went AWOL, and just went back home. Like, he just... That's so, ah, fuck it. That's so great. <laughs> so he, he goes back home at 21 to uh, be a professional gambler. Is his new career. So obviously, whatever he won, he lost and was once again homeless... But not for long. He sought help from his once benefactor and more recent enemy, Gramani, the guy who he beat the shit out of and threw in a canal. Good caning, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give him a good caning. Gramani did what he could and got Casanova a job as a via, uh, violinist. I don't know why that that's hard for me to get around. As a violinist. You said it right the first time. V- violinist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's just violinist, right? Is it? I don't know. It's like that cheese... Uh, gr- <laughs> I can't say it. There's just some words I can't get around. Gr- what? Greer. Greer. Fuck. Greer. I know what you're talking about. You know, it is hard right. shit. Okay, it's not just... <laughs> no, no. Proceed. Like, okay. Come on. <laughs> so, he got Casanova a job as a violinist at his theater, the Teatro San Samuel. Now, being, uh, being a concert violinist back in the day just meant that you were a regular musician and being a musician then is about as grand as it is now meaning he hung out with a bunch of gutter punks they spent their nights unhitching boats from their moorings and faked emergency calls for doctors and midwives they would just waste time and they thought it was hilarious his luck turned around when he was coming home from a wedding sharing a gondola with the local senator bragadin the senator suffered a stroke and was immediately taken home with the help of Casanova. The physicians did what they could to help the senator, meaning they bled him continuously and applied mercury on his chest. <laughs> a priest was called to deliver Senator Bragadin's last rites when he got a massive fever and started choking on his own throat. Against the physician's wishes, Casanova ordered the mercury to be washed off, and Bragadin immediately began to recover. Weird. <laughs> Weird. And that shit you're doing seems to be making things worse. We know what we're doing. We are doctors. <laughs> All right, man. Like... <laughs> Due to Casanova's medical knowledge and age, the senator believed Casanova was a member of the occult, like him. Which, by the way, practicing the occult was very illegal in Venice. Casanova was immediately hired as the family's li- uh, live-in legal assistant, where he spent the next three years where money was no object for him. And, of course, he spent most of his time gambling, having numerous dates and affairs. And while Bragadin took all of this lightheartedly, he warned Casanova that being so jovial and careless was going to bite him in the ass eventually. But according to Casanova, I made a joke of his dire prophecies and went my way. However, Casanova did soon run into trouble. He had a rape case against him. He and a bunch of friends were at... (laughs) Yeah, it was going to happen eventually. Was it? (laughs) Was it? You know what Casanova's known for, right? He's he's the great lover. But nobody reads his stories, so it's... It's a Holy lot more shit. fishy. Holy shit! What? That's what happened to him with the fucking Pope. That's why he got... That's what he got framed for. He fucking raped somebody because he's a fucking rapist. <laughs> Dude, I told you. <laughs> I bet. It could like, be. Yeah. No, so so here's here's how the case went out, apparently. So he and a bunch of 100% his... 100% that's what happened. <laughs> he and a bunch of his gutter punk friends were at some festival, and they said this lady agreed to a gangbang. But honestly, that sounds like complete horseshit. Like, well, no, 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 hold the fuck on. I mean, that's like, look, the, you, it's either her word or all eight of us saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <God. laughs> like, like, I'm sorry. It's, it's, that's, you know, more people there. Plenty of witnesses. I mean, there's, <laughs> Jeez, God, I, I, I can just imagine his, like, the court case I going so wrong. I bet you that's exactly how it fucking went, too. I can imagine the court case just being so wrong. Like, just, you know, he's just like, I mean... It's either her word or eight of ours. I mean, who? what are you going to do? Deny eight of us? Are you going to deny eight of our words? 
that's in your mouth, sir. Oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> it, uh, are you are you excited to put a trigger warning at the beginning of our first ever <laughs> fucking episode? Are you stoked for that? Because that's a hundred percent what we're gonna have to fucking do. Because I'm sure that shit still fucking happens. <laughs> like, oh, for sure. Yeah. Like, no, it's. <laughs> I'm it's 100% just, sure that shit uh, More than anything, though, I'm I'm actually, I'm more surprised that this even, like, went to trial, though, or that he even got in trouble for it. I actually, mean, frankly... Yeah. Well, yeah, whoa, 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 who, who, they, who did they sexually assault? Just some lady. She wasn't even a noble. Just some lady. Just some lady. That's impressive. Yeah, peasant girl. It's like, shit, you know? All right, cool. <laughs> yeah, that judge was very down to earth. Still hated black people, but boy, was he just... He really believed the woman's word. I mean, fuck, like, we, yeah, no, 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 we've been, we've been making, like, a rape joke this entire time. Let's bring race into it, Jordan. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> so, he, Casanova also made a prank against an enemy using a dead body uh, that left the guy paralyzed for the rest of his life. That was also an issue he ran into. So, okay, no, we don't need to talk about it. All right. A little bit. So, he, like... <laughs> So there, so there was this guy he kind of disliked. This guy was uh, was a bit, you know, older than him, probably fucking 70, 80. It's, so what he does yeah, is like about a forty year a bit. Yeah. He he unburied a fresh corpse and put it in this guy's armchair as a joke, and the guy just straight up had a stroke when he saw it. Like. <laughs> I don't really feel like that's his fault. Like, how the fuck are you supposed to account for someone having just a stroke? I mean, maybe like, the fact that age is definitely a factor. <laughs> I mean, like, yeah, but at the same time, like, nobody's gonna tell him, like, hey, yo, that old dude might have a stroke if you, like, fuck with him hard enough. I mean, they're putting mercury on people's chest. You think they know, like... <laughs> like, quick, this man's had a stroke. Hit him in the head with a hammer. <laughs> fuck yeah! <laughs> Waterboard him! Quick! <laughs> so although he was later acquitted for the rape case due to a lack of evidence... <laughs> he couldn't really sink the whole paralysis thing, so he quickly fled Venice and resettled in Parma, birthplace of his father. <clears throat> it was here that Casanova spent a three-month affair with a French woman named Henrietta, who apparently enraptured Casanova so fully and understood him so well that when the affair was over, he fell into a deep, deep depression. He figured that without her, he might as well go back to Venice and let the police do what they will with him. But he found out that uh, from his final rendezvous with Henrietta, she slipped $500 into his pocket. It was how much she found him worth. Well, this gave him a newfound hope for life, so he did, what else? Gamble. He actually won quite a bit, so he did what was called the Grand Tour. Um, the Grand Tour was something rich kids would do back in the day as a sort of coming-of-age present to themselves. Usually the trip starts in Dover. Uh, where you take a ferry to Belgium or France, cross the Alps with the help of your servants that you brought along, uh, visit Paris, then Geneva, go to Italy and visit Florence, Rome, and finally Venice to get your cherry popped if at you what, hadn't already. At what point do you stop and tell the poor people that they really need to go and travel because it's going to broaden their perspective about everything? Well, you know, these are the people that really should be in the high seats of power because with their wealth and their knowledge and their... their um, no, I can't oh, do so it. They don't, even, fuck they don't even fucking talk to the poor people. <laughs> That's, that's, yeah, all right, that's more honest. <laughs> you know, when I was reading about it, they, they would bring full-on furniture sets with them. Like, the servants would have to carry armchairs and couches up and over the Alps. Like, because you don't want to be uncomfortable. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no. So, since Casanova was already in Venice, he would do a kind of reverse grand tour and bang his way up to Paris, which he did. It was 1750, and he was 25 when I mean, he got to Paris. Not, what? Let's not <laughs> bang his way. I mean, we've established that this man is a sexual predator. This isn't <laughs> this isn't just sex we're talking about anymore, man. Like, this is actually pretty fucking dark. If you're just running around with power and money, just ripping through places, it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> like, like, fucking shit. Well, no, it, it was true, though, that he... he I'm, I'm sure... There was more than just the one rape case against him, but I I am positive that he was known as like as a very smooth operator. Like he he did I, I mean, honestly like, get into women's pants I mean, pants like quite this shit was written by him, right? Or you're, the source yeah. you have is him. Yes, but there are other contemporary sources that talk about him. I mean, like I'm just yo. I I know. Yes, at, at this point though, he's not famous for anything. So yeah, maybe. 
you know? Dude, you think Maybe. that's like, you think... No, so the no, no, Grand no. Tour. All right. <laughs> like... So when he got to Paris, he would stay there for the next two years. He learned the language, dabbled in the occult, and eventually became a Freemason, uh, and he rubbed elbows with some of the elite. But Casanova eventually, quote-unquote, left Paris as he was becoming quite well-known to the authorities. Um, not for what you're thinking. No, I'm not going there. I... I'm not going there. It's just when, he, when, he, when he's talking gloriously about getting laid and shit, it's like a little more troubling now that we have that information, man. Like... <laughs> In 1752, Casanova continued its grand tour with his brother Francesco to Dresden, Prague, and Vienna before finally returning to Venice in 1753. During that time, Casanova wrote a play for his mother to star in, which has since been lost, and also Casanova hated Vienna because he said they were morally uptight. I guess he couldn't get laid there. While back home in Venice, Casanova racked up a considerable rap sheet for the next couple of years. His police record consisted of blasphemies, fights, indecent exposure, and quote-unquote seduction, which is probably doing it with married Wait, women. That was a crime? Seduction, according to them. I, I mean, that's the thing. I, I can only find the word seduction, but my guess is married women. He was probably philandering quite a bit. All right. Yeah. I mean, he's like, what, 27? He's like 27 at this point. 27 with a lot of money. Yeah, uh, these ladies are lonely housewives. What are you going to do, you know? There's a market for everyone. I guess. <laughs> so eventually, the police got so tired of Casanova's bullshit that they were looking to get rid of him for good. His past crimes were good enough to land him in jail for a few nights or give him some fines, but he seemed pretty okay with that, which wasn't what the police were going for. To send Casanova to prison, they employed a spy by the name of Giovanni Manucci to dig up some dirt on him and catch him in the act as something so wicked that it would lock him away for years. During this time, Senator Bragadin, who now saw Casanova as a son, told him earnestly that he should flee Venice once again to escape. But Casanova's wickedness, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Casanova's wicked past finally caught up to him, and on July 26, 1755, Casanova was arrested for affront to religion and common decency. More specifically, he was charged for practicing the occult, being a Freemason, and uh, owning forbidden books, of which Casanova supposedly had many. However, Casanova was never told what he was charged with and immediately transported to a prison cell to await trial. He waited in the cell with no information and no outside communication until about a month and a half later on September 12th, where he was formally told that he would receive a prison sentence of five years without trial. The prison Casanova was held in was called the Leds, so-called because of the large lead panels that made up the prison's roof. Awesome. During, <laughs> <laughs> During the winter, the cold air would pass through the panels and not protect the prisoners from the cold, and in the summer, the panels would act as conductors for the heat and cook the prisoners. This was actually the old original prison, consisting of only seven cells and a part of the Doge's palace. The new prison was across the canal from the Doge's palace. At the time... There wasn't much need for the prison to have more than seven cells because the place was built in the 1300s and the punishments were a lot more fierce than trying to keep prisoners alive for an extended period of time. But eventually the new prison was built in the early 1600s when the police realized that they couldn't just keep killing prisoners. So the typical prisoner would be locked away in the new prison while the leads was reserved for prisoners of a special type. These prisoners were typically political prisoners, nobles, and defrocked monks. To connect the two prisons together, there was a limestone bridge built that was completely enclosed on all sides called Ponte de Sospiri, or the Bridge of Size, built in 1603. It was called this by locals because instead of walking the prisoners on their way to the leads just through the Doge's palace front doors, you would have to go through the new prison, cross the bridge, go through the interrogation rooms, and make your way to a cell from there. And the last look you'd have of Venice would be through the barred windows on the bridge. Once you got to the leads, there was a good chance you would never see daylight again. Once Casanova was placed in his cell, Senator Bragadin began immediately looking for him. He knew he was in trouble, but if it was the police, he figured they'd probably just, you know, up and off him. So he started inquiring at all the Venetian jails, 
and at the prison before finding out that, yes, Casanova was being held there. And this is just speculation on my part, but since Bragana and Casanova were such good friends, and finding out Casanova was being held in the leads of all places, I would guess the I, I would guess the fact that Casanova never contacted him for help was a pretty big clue to Bragadin that Casanova never had a trial. Well, Bragadin, after finding out where Casanova was, began immediately looking for an appeal. He started writing numerous letters to the Doge to, uh, if at the very least, give Casanova a cell in the new prison or give him some decent food or something. Because while the conditions in the new prison were probably pretty bad, the leads were downright neglected. As mentioned before, there were no windows, so it was completely dark, and it was still summer, so the lead panels were already heated. But according to Casanova, he had, quote-unquote, the worst of all the cells, where there was nothing but a pallet bed, a table, an armchair, and a flea infestation. After five months of being there, Bragadin's letters to the Doge finally made a difference, and Casanova was given better food, warm beddings for when the winter would roll around, and an allowance from which he could order books from the guards. I'm sure... If they had pornography back then, you'd probably start, you know, where I was assuming as well. that was in the forbidden <laughs> books. I probably it was just like a fat <laughs> stack of hentai. I can't imagine right? what his forbidden books really were. I'm sure a, a big chunk of them were probably the, you know, occult related, but I it's don't know. Just, it, it's just like stacks of his like personal notebooks, and he just has like poorly drawn naked women. The like, <laughs> just, <laughs> like just circles and stick, dots, yeah, like, stick you know, figures like, with huge circles, and, like <laughs> smiley face and big boner, and like, <laughs> <laughs> like they were just like, yeah, you, you're no, no, you're going to the no. <laughs> so, one day during an exercise walk into the prison garret, Casanova found an iron bar and a piece of black marble. So. Okay, here's the thing. When I was writing this, and I was reading that he was in that, you know, he was in the prison garret. It's not really a thing that is used very often. I wasn't quite sure what the fuck a garret was, so I went into the fuck yeah. So I went into well. So here's the thing. I went into Google Images and I typed in garret, and all I got were pictures of redheads. So then I typed in <laughs> what? Like Why you don't know, I know this. <laughs> So I Go typed, on, like, so I typed in prison Garrett, and all I got were mean looking redheads. <laughs> like, what? This is Garrett, and this is prison Garrett. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> you know Garrett's a common like Irish name. No, so, I, I, now I do. Oh, you have you never known anyone named Garrett? I mean, yeah, I've heard the name in passing. Yeah. But no, I can honestly tell you, I've never once known or had a friend ship with someone who was named Garrett. <laughs> Yeah, it's not too common. It's it's almost like naming them Patty at these at this point, you know. Yeah. It's it's a very stereotypical name, but yeah, at Garrett, I typed in for Garrett, all I got were just all these Irish kids. And then when I went into prison, Gary, it was just all I got they was were just mean. a bunch of pictures of little redheaded <laughs> Irish kids and on a watch list. <laughs> like <laughs> So wait, did you ever find out what the fuck it was? I think it's a room. <laughs> I mean, did you did you did you try switching from did you try switching from images to web? I did. I I just I don't know. You, what do you tell me? It was still pictures when you switched to web. Like it was just it was just fucking autobiographies of men named Garrett. Like I, people don't use Garretts these days. I don't fucking know what it is. Like I don't. It's well, a room. I kind of want to. It's a room. I feel like I can accomplish this immediately on a fucking Google search. What are you looking at books for, motherfucker? You got a you got a phone in your pocket. Where's my dictionary? Who took my fucking dictionary? Don't ask me where your fucking dictionary. No, the internet is what led me down this path. All right, so anyway, <clears throat> the Garrett's a room. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Casanova found an iron bar and a piece of black marble. Seeing that no one was watching, he quickly stuffed the contraband into his pant leg and smuggled it back into his prison cell, where he hid the items in his armchair. Which I guess he also had. Fucking lazy boy. Um, his escape plan was... Flea infested, infested <laughs> coon covered lazy boy. Like... <laughs> his escape plan was fairly simple. He knew directly under his cell was the Inquisitor's Chambers, which had a window facing a canal, which he could make his escape. He knew the whole place would be unoccupied because in a couple weeks, there would be a festival that none of the prison staff would want to miss. So during the two weeks leading up to the festival, during the times that he was alone, he would sharpen the iron rod with a piece of black marble as quietly as he could. When the time was right, he would pry off the floorboards and make his escape to the room below. But three days before the festival, 
Bragadin's pleas were heard, and Casanova was moved to another cell that had a window and a view. He tried to protest, but the guards Fuck. moved him anyway. <laughs> no, it's really cool. No, I deserve this. No, I'm a rapist. <laughs> like, keep me in here. Hey, buddy, I hope you're happy, so man. So wait, are you confessing to... to to rape right now. Well, yeah, but no, uh, no I, uh... Look, fuck it, how, yeah, no, move me to the window. How many, people, like, how many people am I supposed to have killed to stay in this room? <laughs> like, 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 what do you want, fraud? Do you want tax fraud? The whole time he's just... I've done looking, sodomy. <laughs> the whole time he's just looking out, he's like, it's fucking... All I have to do is get the fuck to the next town. <laughs> like, that's all I have to do. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move to the next town. I'm gonna start calling myself Garrett. Every... Yeah, you know, <laughs> no one will know who I am. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, are you Garrett? T top of the morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> so Casanova fell into a deep depression, but his jailers gave Casanova his old armchair from his last cell, the one with the sharpened iron rod in it. So Casanova tried to come up with another plan. He knew... He wouldn't be able to escape through the floor again, since he had no idea where it led to. But he knew that just above the wood ceiling were the lead plates. So, with the help of another prisoner in the cell next to him, a renegade priest named Father Balbi. Renegade priest named Father Balbi. I don't... Why the fuck aren't we doing this about him? <laughs> this guy sounds like just because... out of the gate. I'm stoked. <laughs> this renegade, <laughs> priest, renegade priest Balbi. He didn't write a book, otherwise I would have read it. <laughs> Renegade priest couldn't fucking read. <laughs> like, I didn't read the Bible. I memorized it. Oh, God, this guy's deep in it. Whoa. <laughs> so Casanova passed Father Balbi uh, the iron rod from the cell next to him, uh, had him cut a hole in the ceiling above himself, crawl over to Casanova's side, and cut a hole for him to escape. The reason I think Casanova did it this way was because Casanova was roomed with another prisoner who was jailed for spying, and Casanova felt he couldn't be trusted. Uh, meaning, in the time the hole was made in Casanova's cell, he could leave before the guards were alerted instead of wasting time trying to help Father Balbi. Like, it, it would have just been super quick. Like, he quickly gives the shit to, to Father Balbi. The uh, other prisoner has no idea what's going on. While he's cutting a hole, he crawls over, and as soon as the hole is made... Just Casanova jumps up, and they both flee. They both just get the fuck out of there. Um, but he did he did threaten the spy, just for good measure anyway. Uh, just for funsies. Why not? Like, Cas so. <laughs> like don't you ever fuck it! Casanova escaped while leaving behind a note that quoted the Bible. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. He's a very religious man, after all. Casanova he a priest, man. What the fuck? He was. Uh, I mean, he was. Uh, he was technically living in in abbeys. I can't say how much of the Lord's work he really did, but uh, he was there. He did eat the bread and sup the wine. So, <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine the relationship being struck between Casanova and Father Balbi too? He's just like, I believe that we must purify the world. Through God's work. And he's like, yeah. Those nuns are pretty cute, though. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's not going to go well. I mean, this, fucking, this dude's just a, such a fucking tremendous piece of shit. I mean, he's just like, like, if he were alive now, he would just be some super shitty, weird flexing social media rich kid influencer. <laughs> just traveling around with sexual assault allegations on him. Like, like... <laughs> Casanova and Father Balbi pried open one of the lead panels on the roof and made their way to an adjacent window to an empty room 25 feet below, using a pre-prepared bedsheet rope. They lowered themselves down, changed clothes, and told the guard at the gate that they were out of function at the Doge's palace and accidentally got locked inside when they were wandering the grounds. They were promptly led out and made their final escape out of Venice via gondola before the first guards of the day made their rounds. Casanova arrived in Paris on January 5th, uh, 1757, the same day that Francois Damiens attempted to assassinate King Louis the Fifteenth, he essentially just rushed past his bodyguards when uh, when he was on a walk about town, and Damiens tried stabbing him with a penknife. Uh, King Louis was wearing a thick jacket though, so he was barely hurt. Penknife? Uh, yeah, it's just it's uh, imagine a scalpel. 
The guy was trying to kill the king with a I fucking mean, I mean, scalpel. fucking props I mean, for getting past the bodyguards, bud. But, like, really, you're going to go through all that effort and then pen knife? I know. Like, why not just, like... <laughs> just a whittle a bigger stick. Like, like, yo, why not just knife? Why, <laughs> like, 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 what the fuck? Like, I carved this steak from this Bowie knife, and I'm gonna, just going to leave like, this just, Bowie knife behind. Like, like, I don't know. I mean, I imagine they're expensive at the fucking time and shit, but, like, you know, just steal one from a butcher, just fucking keep it in your jacket. If you can get past the guards, for fuck's sake, well, I, I know you're going to acquire a knife. <laughs> like, for fuck's sake. Like, or even just fuck bare hands at that point. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> just like, just... Although it would be a lot funnier. He clearly would not have died from the encounter, but I think it'd be really funny if a guy just went past the guards and just started slapping the king. And just says, ah! <laughs> Quit being an asshole! <laughs> like, <laughs> just starts punching the king in the face. God. Is, that what, is that what a pen knife is? A, fucking, a scalpel? It's, it's essentially a scalpel. It's a very small... It's like, it's the size of a pen, essentially, but the blade is not the size of a pen. It's, it's... Okay, so it's, so it's like a shiv. Yeah. All right. I feel like in France you would have found, like, sharper shoes that could have probably just fucking killed him. found some, like, some gnarly shit on the ground. I mean, I mean, for Christ's sake, I mean, we've already covered that everything's covered in shit. So, I mean, maybe just, like, just find (laughs) even an infection. (laughs) Like, it doesn't really matter what you stab him with, just make sure it ain't clean. Honestly, he could have probably just given him a pastry, and there was at least a good 50% chance there was shit in it anyway. There was a bunch of shit in it. (laughs) I wonder how much of fucking people's time back in the day was just spent dealing with E. coli. Like... (laughs) Well, like how don't live like, that long, like so. how much of a percentage of your life was dealing with just doubled over, like the, like whatever weird bench or pot they had in their house that they had to physically change out, <laughs> well, just fucking vomiting out some infection. What's kind of funny about it is that there was so much shit that it caused you to you know get sick, and then you would just add to the shit because of that. All that you were doing was shitting. Like half of your life was just spent pooping. Just pooping. Like, <laughs> just poop <pooping>. puking. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Well, although he didn't see the assassination attempt, Casanova was present during Damien's torture and execution uh, on March 28th, about two months later. He said that he and his friends watched for four hours. (laughs) This guy just getting tortured for four hours out in a fucking public square. This guy was really giving the go. I was was reading the whole thing about it. They did the shit with the horses. They did everything. The shit with the horses? Yeah, uh, quartering. The well, drawing. well dra- the drawing. Yeah, the they didn't, they quartering. didn't, I, he may have been quartered, but I know that they, they did the first part. They did the drawing where they had him stretched out with horses and shit. The quartering and section and is they, actually. What happens after that? Do they just pink belly him real hard or? <laughs> what's, I'm not following. <laughs> the drawing and quartering is usually they, the horses pull you. That's the drawing. The quartering is, uh giving you a little less tension by cutting off your arms and legs. <laughs> oh, word, word. Wait, it doesn't just rip it off? I thought it, like, ripped. Uh, if it takes I thought it long. would just start ripping chunks off because they're just, like, freaking out the horses and they're pulling real hard, so it starts, you know. If it takes too long, I mean, shit. Everyone's got... I, it's like, yeah, it's... It's like, it's oh, fuck up, oh, we're losing this crowd, boys. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, you after a certain point... You've heard him scream a little too many expletives, and he said all that there needs to be said. It's like, I mean, just get to the next one, you know? Yeah. I, I'm sure they had, like, five other executions that day. <laughs> there's, like, no, there's no live leak back in the <laughs> day, man. I need this. I can imagine somebody <laughs> selling, like, one of those, like, tourist maps back in the day that's just like, oh, you're going to see a guillotine right here, but down the street from there, all right, we got the thumb screws. Why is he Australian? Why is this person Australian? Fuck. Oh, wow. I that's... mean, props. It's a good Australian accent. No, I can't Wait, do Australian like, accents. Just As did. it turns out, if I try to do French, it's that's Australian. That's crazy. I didn't know that about myself. Yeah. Well, I know how to do Australian now. Just I think mean, of French people. I would, like, attempt to do one, but it would just, it would just be... I mean, I'm pretty sure it would just be cringe-inducing, because I'm pretty sauced. Do a black but... voice. No. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> hey, tank everything. <laughs> The thing is, Casanova... (laughs) On that note, moving on, like... (laughs) Casanova was still kind of infamous with the police, even though it was still five years since the last time he was in Paris. So none of his rich friends really wanted to house him. 
The best he got was a connection that landed him a job as uh, one of the trustees for the first ever French lottery. His job was to be a ticket salesman, and he actually ended up becoming one of their best, uh, leaving them filthy rich and not having to leech off of anyone he knows for the first time ever. Now, Casanova had a knack for numbers, and his time living with the Senator Bragadin and, and being a Freemason made people believe he was more than a master of the occult. He was a wizard. Casanova used people's belief in him to con the rich out of their money, but unfortunately his fame as a wizard was short-lived. When Casanova started telling people he was attempting to find the secret to creating the Philosopher's Stone, thus granting immortality, a fellow con man named Count, uh, Count de Saint-Germain said, Shit, you're trying to make the Philosopher's Stone? I already made it. I'm 500 years old. So that pretty much ended like the scam for Casanova. This fucking turf, yeah, know, like. yeah. Like, <laughs> so that pretty much that was it for Casanova. I, and um, actually, Count de Saint Germain is is a very famous wizard. Like he's a, a very famous wizard. Well, I mean, he didn't have. That's his career. Hey, no, no, no. no, no. There's been, no, no, no. People say like you know, no. The oldest trade, the oldest job, is bullshit artist. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, that's that. Well, then yes, <laughs> like, I call him wizard out of respect, but you know, <laughs> bullshit artistry through the ages. Yes, like, he was he was a very he was a very famous con man. He's, uh, <laughs> but I do like that he's just like one upping his wizard story, just like. <laughs> Please, just I like, did that. Just like, buddy, you think you're full of shit? Fucking no. <laughs> Watch this. <laughs> Hold my parmesan. Hold my miracle cure. <laughs> like... Well, you remember Teresa Eimer, the uh, stage performer that he thought crawled into bed with him when it was really that senator? Amazingly, yes. So she had his daughter in 1754, but was imprisoned in Paris in 1759, for debts while Casanova just happened to be there. Instead of adopting his own daughter, Casanova adopted her son Giuseppe from her former marriage to another guy instead. No idea Whoa. what happened to the kid. Casanova didn't write about any of this. So he did he left his former God, lover he sucks and his so daughter, much. And he's just like, the boy. Give me the boy. <laughs> just fucking and but he didn't write about this kid. Nobody knows what happened to him. Which leave that up to your own imagination. I, I, to be honest, it's it's like this guy is going through a fucking RPG and he's just <laughs> wanting to see what happens if he chooses the negative like dialogue option every single fucking time. Like, I mean, to be honest, what I actually think probably happened to this kid was um, he probably thought he was hot shit, like it, like Casanova thought he was hot shit, and he he probably thought that he could take this kid under his wing and teach him to be a con man and he couldn't. So he probably abandoned the child somewhere. Honestly, I, I, that's my guess, but that seems very Casanova to me. Like, <laughs> if it's, yeah, no, if it's not mentioned, then it's super fucked up and it absolutely happened. Either like, that or he, he, uh, somehow knew that he could make a dollar off of the boy more than he could the girl and sold the child. I, I wouldn't put that past him either. Just, I, I'm sure that just very God, open market, sucks. <laughs> just I'm sure very open market slave trading was happening every day. You know, it's just like, hey, want to buy buy a boy? Like, <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> go on, go on. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one has all his teeth. <laughs> so the Seven Years' War was kicking off, and the French government reassigned Casanova to being a bond salesman where he failed really hard, taking out loans to try and save his business reputation, uh, while also taking out loans to pay for dates and score prostitutes. Eventually, like all things Casanova, he ran into Ooh. incredible debt and was thrown in prison. However, he was released after just four days at the insistence of an aristocratic friend. Unfortunately, just a short time after his release from prison, his friend in high places that got him a job as the lottery salesman got let go by King Louis the Fifteenth and could no longer save Casanova's ass from trouble. So without hesitation, Casanova sold all his shit and hauled ass to Holland before the people he borrowed money from over the years could get a hold of him. But he never even made it as far as Holland because he kept getting into debts and run-ins with the police along the way and had to keep changing plans so no one would know where he was trying to get to. Like, hey, you guys playing cards? Man, I hope they play cards in Holland, where I'm going. So, <laughs> what's the buy-in? <laughs> you know? So he had to just keep fucking changing. Like, well, fuck, man, I guess I'm... 
has Utah been discovered yet? Guess I'm going to Utah. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> so, eventually he ended up in Switzerland. Not too far from Holland, really. That's yeah, I, one I, country I, over. Yeah, I, I know that. I do. I, I know I'm guessing. That. Yeah. It's got to be one or two. Absolutely. No more than three countries over. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's <laughs> like it's like the same place. It's Well, yeah. looking back, he decided to become a monk and leave his life of wanton debauchery oh, behind. Oh, fuck. I'm sure that went fantastically. <laughs> well, luckily, he slept on it and just overnight decided to just change his name and keep acting like Casanova. <laughs> he called himself the Count de Ferrucci. Ferrucci uh, was his mother's maiden name. And he did his usual thing of nailing and stealing from nobles. After a few years of this, in 1763, at the age of 38, Casanova Fuck, went... Fuck, he's only 38? Yeah, he's done, he's done Jesus so much. Jesus, Murph, dude. Like, <laughs> I've oh. been to jail a few times. Like, <laughs> he's like, no, I've been in the darkest dungeon in existence. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, Casanova went to England, attempting to sell the idea of the lottery to the English. I mean, it is a pretty good idea. These stupid people give you their money, and hey, maybe one of them makes a few dollars back. Uh, but of course... He, uh, he would be the president of this English lottery committee. Problem was, he didn't speak English, so he could only room with people who spoke either French or Italian. And, of course, he only wanted to room with young, beautiful women, so he put an ad in English newspapers for lodgings. And the plan worked. He left England poorer than he started, making no progress on his, lot uh, on his lottery scheme, and with a raging STD. He somehow... <laughs> managed to couch surf around the rest of Europe trying to scra trying to scam other countries with whoa. the lottery idea. Whoa. 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 <laughs> he whoa. even managed to hold an audience with the King of Prussia, uh, Frederick the Great, and Empress of Russia, Catherine the Great, but with no success. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay, can we, can we back? Can yeah. We, can what, we back? What's up with... Okay, raging ST. Yeah, so, I mean, he... he he I mean, I mean, I know obviously, like nobody hit the fucking th like nobody's gonna be like, yeah, that's gonorrhea. Like nobody fucking knew that. Yeah. But like, yo, like you, you just cocked that shit back in the day, and you just like troopered through it without antibiotics. <sighs> like what the yeah? Fuck? Like probably did cocaine about it, but you know, I, I don't mean, know. Wait. He didn't exactly say what STD it was, but I'm sure he was like. Huh, that's not a beauty, Mark. You know? <laughs> like, hey, that looks fucking terrifying. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's probably something, but, I mean... Hopefully that to boil that guy. ate into my dick like a bite, Mark, uh, will heal back. <laughs> <laughs> Am I an X-Men? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time, though, when Casanova was in London, uh, that he had a fallout with a Portuguese lover. Casanova bought a parrot and taught it to say, Miss Charpillon is more of a whore than her mother, and put the parrot up for auction. So it Whoa. just got to keep yelling this over a large crowd. <laughs> 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 that is... I do love that. You know, I, fuck, I fucking hate this guy, but, but that is fucking gold. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's... Yeah. <laughs> He at one point almost got married before realizing that he knew his fiancée's mother as a former lover of his from years back. Turned out his fiancée was actually his own daughter. Whoa. The marriage was off, but to celebrate the reunion, they had a threesome <laughs> with his own daughter and her mom. Horseshit. Horseshit. <laughs> this resulted in him impregnating his own daughter. Whoa. The tale God, pretty much... I hate this. The, that... That anecdote, Fuck. Though, that pretty much ends there. He he doesn't really talk about it after that. He's like, huh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> he just skips over the rest of it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just left. <laughs> <You know? laughs> God. <laughs> what the f At least you could say you've never had it this bad, you know? <laughs> like, what the f God. <laughs> well, Casanova ended up in Warsaw, Poland in 1766, but was kicked out of the country because of a lover's quarrel between himself and a nobleman named Brynicki, who both wanted to bang the same actress. They decided to duel, and Casanova shot Brynicki in the stomach and survived, and Brynicki shot Casanova in the left hand. Doctors recommended that Casanova amputate, and he declined, and he got better. So that was a thing that happened. 
pretty he, gnar. Yeah. I mean, he built up that lead resistance in the prison. So, <laughs> so I drink a little mercury every day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he wandered around Europe a bit more after this before finally getting yet another STD in Dresden and decided, fuck it, I'll go back to Paris. <laughs> I like that that was the nail oh, in the yeah, coffin for him. <laughs> like... I like that that was his, like, nail in the coffin, though. Like, he gets shot in the hand, has a threesome involving his own daughter. But then yeah. as soon as his dick burns again, he's like, ah, I do miss home. You know? <laughs> Just decides to pack it in. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's that's a sign. Time to leave. I, I guess. Mean... A- anytime you get an STD, time to move. That's that. Them's the rules. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. Show me your penis. <laughs> 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 So he went back to Paris, but he was only there for a few months before King Louis XV set an order himself to kick Casanova out of France because of a scam Casanova tried to pull over on a noblewoman. He told this lady that he would be able to reincarnate her own soul into the body of a son, that he would, like, it, it would become her. Dude, I, I love that you could just say that to somebody and they'd be like, absolutely. <laughs> well, he had this he had this like, background of being a fucking wizard, I guess. And he's like, oh, <laughs> you know, and he's just... And this lady, though, like, I want you to imagine somebody being catfished. That was essentially his whole thing to older women. It, like, later on in his life, he was very much like... Like, just old women loved him. And this particular old woman, he was just like, let me impregnate you and your son will be born. It's going to be you. And... I, it, 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 it will Actually, reincarnate. Actually, I see where you're going. You know, you're telling me this right now, and I'm feeling a little loose. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, like, like she was just going to switch bodies as soon as the baby was born or something. But all of her friends were like, dude, no, he's just trying to raw dog you. And so now he was banned in Poland, France, and small municipalities here and there, as well as several warrants out for his arrest in capitals throughout Europe, which includes his own hometown, the Republic of Venice. In one last turn of desperation, Casanova figured he'd try his usual game uh, game of whining, dining, and fucking the elite in Spain, the only place in Europe he wasn't infamously known yet. Now, he did climb the ranks in Spain all the way up to an audience with King Charles III, but King Charles didn't really like Casanova, so he was kind of shit out of luck there. Casanova bummed around Barcelona for a bit before someone put a hit out on him, so he quickly bounced out of Spain and just headed for Rome. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's, I, that's all Spain? I, that's all of Spain. He just, I mean, look, his whole thing is if, if he can't live lavishly, he doesn't want to live at all. And he was like holding audience with the king, and the king's just like, actually, I'm not really into dead baby jokes. And he's just like, well, I'm out of material. See you later. And so he just didn't, he just, you know, he couldn't win over the guy. Honestly, it's, that probably says better things about the king of Spain than probably the history of the, the king just the king like of Spain. Out. He's like, you seem like a massive piece of shit. <laughs> Are you playing footsie with my daughter? Like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> just, you know, I see you moving, like, I mean, like, no, I can't see your feet, but, like, no, under the, you're obviously doing the, you know, like... <laughs> fucking, the, ta- the fucking, like, tablecloth keeps moving around his junk, and he's just like, Are you jerking off over there, Casanova? No, you don't see my hand or my penis. <laughs> I don't know, I'm just getting weird vibes off this dude. Everybody's looking at him like, what are you talking about? It's fine. I mean, we can't see his hand or his penis. Why does this man smell like tuna and tap water? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from Rome, Casanova started a campaign to allow him back into Venice. Like, just, you all know me, you all hate me. Wouldn't you rather see me back home? He he wrote legislators and gained supporters, and it actually worked. In September of 1774, after 18 years in exile, Casanova was able to return home. But Venice was different. His mom died almost as soon as he's back, and most of the people he knew were dead. He ended up roam, uh, rooming with an old friend uh, while he was there, but he wasn't rich enough to support Casanova on his own, so Casanova uh, had to turn state spy for cash. Uh, the thing was, he's 49 now, and he can't really go adventuring to be a spy. So he's pretty much just assigned to hang out at parties and listening to people talk about illegal so, shit they so, do. So, oh my god! Yeah. Oh my god! He just Fuck turns into a narc. No, no, like this is the worst person. <laughs> yeah, he just reports noble people for a paycheck to the police. He's That's a it. rich kid rapist <laughs> who's a snitch. Yeah. 
That <laughs> yeah. Fuck him, man. Like <laughs> God. His years of cross trekking Europe was starting to show too. He had a he had smallpox scars. He had a sunken face. Uh, he was older and uglier, so no one would want to fuck him. And he didn't even make a lot from spying, so he couldn't even gamble. Uh, at 50, Casanova ran into a former lover of his, a stage actress named Irene and their nine-year-old daughter, uh, who he had a threesome with before passing them off to some pedophile baron friend whoa, of his. Whoa, whoa, you just glazed over that like it was a better... <clears throat> no, no, we can talk about it. All right. Now, <laughs> really? it was... Is that another incestuous threesome? Yeah, that's Okay, two. so we've got incestuous, so... rapist, con man... Narc. Uh, snitch. This yeah. is checking off literally everything on the fucking box, dude. Like, yeah, he. Uh, by the way, duty threw into the fucking water after beat him with a cane. That's attempted murder right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but he didn't die, so it's kind of funny when you look back at it. I mean, yeah, but you know, all the poo poo. He threw him into the fucking, you know, little, you know, wherever he threw him in the water. <laughs> that man probably died of an infection three days later. No, that was fucking. That's he threw him in a fucking poo poo river. That's what happened. He beat him with a cane, he threw him in a poo-poo river, he had incestuous sex, he raped people. This is... This I mean, man's go, a monster! Going back I mean, on the river canal shit system there, I'm, I'm not 100% that it all went directly into the canals or that's where people emptied their buckets, but I'm pretty sure... Where the like, fuck where else, else were you? Like, no, I know, I'm just saying. I, but yeah, you know, the first... Oh the yeah, first, that's running, I don't have to look at it anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, like... The first threesome he had, it was like, hey, this is my own daughter, but hey, at least she's... You know, Wait, fucking... I, thought the, I thought the first threesome was the. Uh, well, yes, those the were the quote two, unquote two virginity. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I mean his first incestuous threesome. It was like you know, <laughs> if it was his fiance, she had to have been in her twenties, maybe, maybe uh, late teens. Really? Late really? teens. We're gonna, we're gonna be. We're gonna be like, hey, no, I mean, come on now, let's be reasonable here. For this man, I mean, I... if he's his fiance, I'm sure she was of age to our normal modern standards. I'm just trying to say, no, man, like, I, well, because if she's a teenager, then it's still. I bet you she was like still... fucking fifteen. But it could be. But here's the thing. I would all that I'm so trying to much do. Money on that. All I'm trying like... to say, I, I, there's no other way for me to say, like, well, it's less shitty for him to rape that child than it is for him to rape this child. You know? <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's fucking... It's, yeah. She's nine! It's rape, it's rape, it's yeah. not good! But, like, no. fuck, like... <laughs> well, it was after nine years of this life in Venice that Casanova tried his hand at writing, in the form of a big fuck you to Venetian nobility and their shitty attitudes. This, once again, expelled Casanova from Venice, this time personally... or Sorry, not personally, permanently. After this, Casanova did okay, relocating in Paris where he was no longer a wanted man. He met Benjamin Franklin. I'm sure they had a, I'm sure they had a lot to talk about. Um, finally, Casanova got a job as a librarian in 1785 to the Bohemian royal family. He had job security, good pay, but the job was boring. Contemplating suicide, he decided instead <laughs> to write his memoirs to pass the time. <laughs> is that? Is that it? What? No. No. We're Go still going. Him. I'm just saying. No, he because he's not dead. It's just, you know, he's an old man. He's thinking about killing him, so he just didn't do it yet. Uh, so Casanova first entertained the idea of writing about his life in 1780, but he actually started writing what would become known as The Story of My Life in 1789 when he was 64. His memoirs were completed three years later, but the stories only reach up until 1774, essentially ending when he was accepted to return back to Venice the first time. This ends the saga on a much happier note than his later life, as we now know. He wrote that writing the memoirs essentially for his own amusement really helped him get by in his later years, but by the time he completed the work, he started having okay, second thoughts about publishing. Huh? I said, oh good, I'm glad he was comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> I just want him to be happy. What the fuck, man? <laughs> God. By the time he completed the work, he started having second thoughts about publishing, realizing in hindsight just how much of a piece of shit him and his friends really were. Look at that, all it took was 64 years. Six, so I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing that, you know, then he took steps that kind of rectify his actions. Absolutely maybe, apologizes, makes the stories not funny in any way. And, you know, goes and, like, <laughs> gives, you know, his mini bastard children's family some money or something. Yeah, that's where it's going, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he worked on these memoirs for the rest of his life, erasing the stories from history that made him look bad. And by knowing the stories he left, it's easy to assume the real Casanova was an absolute monster. 
Now, he published several small works since 1752, about the same time he had a lengthy stay in Paris during his grand tour, but these were just odds and ends stories, like how he escaped from the Leds, which was very popular. Casanova never fell out of love with Venice, and the last bit of news he heard about the Old Republic was that the Republic no longer existed thanks in part to Napoleon. Casanova died on June 4, 1798, at the age of 73. His last words were, I have lived as a philosopher, and I die as a Christian. Yeah, so he died as a <laughs> bullshit artist. That's what he fucking did. Like, God, what a piece of shit. He's a philosopher and a Christian. What more can he say? <laughs> he was buried uh, somewhere on the Bohemian royal family grounds, but the exact site is unknown. He died without publishing his memoirs. don't want anybody pissing on it. Like... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's a gender-neutral bathroom right there. <laughs> <laughs> He died without publishing his memoirs, but the manuscript to his works were held by relatives until they were finally published in French in 1822, about 24 years after his death. He wrote the memoirs in French because, according to him, French was more well-known than Italian. But I call bullshit because being French was seen as uh, being a part of a high society, and he changed his name to Jacques. People know him as Jacques Casanova instead of Giacomo Casanova today. Um... When the original memoirs were published in 1822, they were severely abridged, with many of the stories seen as too lewd for publication. So, of course, that meant that the naughty bits and pieces of his story were bootlegged across multiple countries and being translated in over 20 languages over the years. It wasn't until 1960 that the whole collection was printed in full. Twelve volumes and 3,500 pages to tell the story of my life by Jacques Casanova. Is that a lot? It's pretty lengthy, yeah. I mean, the the book that I have doesn't scrape by four hundred. I don't think. Book that you the book that you have of Casanova, yeah. Oh, all right. I've read it. I mean, I own it. <laughs> um, well, he was of course. Uh, well, he of course exaggerated his tales. He did tell a tale of over one hundred twenty different sexcapades, and almost all of those tales are verifiable through other people's diaries. And while we don't know who the oldest woman Casanova ever had sex with was, we do know that he bought a 13-year-old sex slave and bought the virginity of a 9-year-old from Fuck. her mother. He fully admitted to this as a source of pride. Yeah, he did. But, you know... <laughs> fucking God. I couldn't... I could not find the article after I accidentally closed it, but there was an article out there of... Um, basically, they did trace Casanova's lineage... He did have multiple illegitimate children throughout the years, but they did find one guy who was like a businessman in France in the 60s or something, and, you know, his name is totally unrelated to Casanova, but they tell him, like, hey, you're uh, you're one of the last living descendants that we could find of Casanova. And he's like, fuck! He thought, no, he thought it was, like, the coolest thing, because that's that's the thing is nowadays people see Casanova as the, as the next you know like oh that guy's a real Casanova doesn't mean that he's out roofing girls like it probably should mean but he's yeah that guy's a real stud this <laughs> that, that man was a fucking monster Are you fucking kidding me with thirteen whoa I'm not gonna repeat it but Jesus fuck nine year nine. 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 Bought Nine. The, but he bought the virginity, so it was okay. It's not like he's a monster. Okay, all right, all right. No, it was a fair he, transaction. He, 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 he right, did well, a fair that changes it. What the fuck? Look. There was only one punch left on that subway card to get a free sub, you know? And that's, hey, man, that's as good as gold. My source is today. <laughs> oh, the Memoirs of Jacques Casanova by Jacques Casanova, translated by, I think, Madeline and Ernest Boyd. Uh, Random House Publishing, 1957. It's hard to say who translated it because they didn't give credit to people who translated back then, I guess. And Wikipedia. And that is the first episode of Caleb Can't Read. Did you have fun? I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> like... Uh, as a, I mean, so I started everything off by saying, like, could I really make a podcast about this? So I wanted to see, could I list... 50 authors off the top of my head, mm -hmm. and I did it. And I currently am researching the 13th episode of it, um, and so far there is not a single likable person. 
Yeah, go <laughs> fucking figure, man. I mean, any, anybody notable is going to be some rich motherfucker, and guess what? They all suck regardless of timeline. As it, to- like, as it turns out, tortured artists doesn't really mean that they've had it hard. It's that they've been torturing people. It's the torturing artist. All these people are horrible. Like, look, man, that one, that one time I had to go to court for that thing, that was really hard on me. You know, like... He does like, kind of turn it around where he's just like, fuck, you man, know, man, like, I, do you know how hard it is to uproot not your family. Like, I hey, mean, that was really scary. My life. Do, you, do you know what would have happened to my life if I got convicted for what I did to that woman? <laughs> he always, he always <laughs> bitches <laughs> about, like, how he has to travel away from the problem and it, rather than face the repercussions. But every time he leaves, he's leaving behind multiple lovers and, and children that are his. Like, he always leaves these women behind. He's like, look, man, this is a huge <laughs> emotional burden on me. I will say. <laughs> like, so he, he did do this thing, though, that women fucking loved. And it was written in all their diaries and shit. He did take condoms, and he would blow them up like balloons and fucking let them go. And they thought that was the fun- <laughs> they thought that was the funniest fucking thing. Like right, he, well, then I'm that trying that tonight. That. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll go over fucking fantastically. Like, <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. And I feel like it was, you know... I feel like it was more just kind of them tolerating it because he had money and power. And then he's writing out later on that, like, yeah, they fucking loved that. <laughs> that was a thing they loved that I wasn't, like, you know... Fair point. That I wasn't just, like, you know, because... Y- y- I'm sure the interaction wasn't, like, oh, I'm paying you money or, you know, you're going to get things from me because I'm a rich person and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not just, like, an out-in-the-open thing that fucking happens, but it's implied. It's in, like, the fucking... It's in between yeah. the lines there, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, I, could just, like, I could just see him like, just, this like... Man's ver- this man's, like, view of the world is going to be so fucking skewed just for the fact that, like, every interaction he has like that is so fucking leveraged by his money. Yeah. Where, I like, mean, everyone just... around him has pressure yeah, to it's place like, him. Like, it's like, you know, he he asks a woman, like, hey, you, uh, you want me to, uh, lick your butt? And she's just like, no. And then he just, all that, all that she hears as she turns around is a, of, like, him clicking open his coin purse, and she goes, well... You know, <laughs> no, not. but like he's he doesn't have to deal with any of the shit that a normal guy does. You know what I do when I when a woman turns me down? I go, come on, come on, yeah, come on. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen <laughs> I haven't seen that. No, you haven't, because I'm a married man. Because you have a waifu. <laughs> yes. Well, how do you think I got I got I got into it with Nicole, man? It's just. You just walked right up. Come on. Yeah. (laughs) I just walked right up to that one girl I was dating sister, and I was like, hey there. We don't need to talk about that. (laughs) Editing. (laughs) Oh, the wonders of editing. Exactly. (laughs) Uh, Any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? I mean, fuck this guy. Well, sure. I mean, no, seriously. I mean, I get it. No, no, no. I think might, you might be confused. Like, See, the no, man's an no, author. No, 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 <laughs> Fuck him. A fuck. philosopher and a Christian, Caleb. Fuck this rich kid rapist. <laughs> fuck him. He's terrible. <laughs> He's a terrible fucking human being. And the only reason it's documented is because he had that inflated of a fucking ego. Like, He's the only one that published the story. Out yeah, of all no, the people fuck that, this yeah. fucking man. Like, you know, like, everybody says, like, hey, what are you going to do with a fucking time machine? Everybody's like, oh, I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to fucking kill Hitler. Which is retarded. Because, like, yeah, now you're back in time. Good luck. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's not going to go that. But I feel like I go back in time. Pretty easy chance I can kick his ass. <laughs> well, sure. A Frenchman like, in the 18th century, if he's not... <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't know the dude. I, you know, of course... No, but he's a nobleman in, in pre-revolutionary like, times. Maybe, you know, I roll of back course. there and he's got... And he's, like, fucking, like, 6'3 and just, like, a unit. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. You know, and oh, it's this not is why fucking, wo- This is why women were into you. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, no... All right. I will say I will say this in all the like etchings that I see of Casanova, like say blowing up a condom or anything like that. The dude is short, shorter than the women that he's with. The yeah. guy was I think was like five four, five five. No, that has your place. Like, no, no. If access to a time machine was had, I would kick his ass. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like him. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> Like a fucking monster. <laughs> a monster! You We're talking incestuous sexual assault! Holy so, shit! Here's the thing. I have the first ten episodes written out, ready to go, Yeah. For, for this first season. Are they all like this? 
No, but I do want to tell you, he's not the worst. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Like, fuck. Episode eight. We're doing it. All right. <laughs> well, we have nothing more to say than fuck it. Salutations, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.